Hi, this is Daryl Myatt from Keller, Texas. I want to talk to you today about 21 irrefutable facts of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, I know most of the time I bring you news of the world as it relates to Bible prophecy. And I just want to make sure that you don't misunderstand my point. I think it's very important that we continue to do business until Christ comes. We need to do the work of God. You know, in John 6, 29, Jesus told us the work of God is this, to believe upon the one whom he sent, that being Jesus. And um, <clears throat> I know a lot of you kind of like watching the news and seeing these things that kind of point to the return of Christ, but when Jesus told us to watch and pray, you know, a lot of people like to watch, but they forget to pray. You know, they like to watch the news and see what's going on and, and see things that relate to Bible prophecy. But I just want to remind you that we need to continue being faithful servants of God, even though we're watching all these things happen. Um, you know, even though we're seeing the Palestinians want to divide Israel, we're wanting to see them... Uh, you know, have their own statehood recognized by the UN. We're watching as Israel contemplates striking Iran to prevent them from getting nuclear weapons. Uh, you know, this whole Elenin thing. And, and you know, do we really know the truth of Elenin? You know, some places say it's a comet, just real small. Other places say it's larger than the Earth. And everything in between. And we've seen so many different stories that conflict with each other. Who knows what the truth is? And, and honestly, I have to say, I don't know what the truth is regarding Elenin. You know, if it truly will block out the sun. I've seen it on NASA websites before that said it would, but, you know, now those stories are gone as I tried to search back for them. But I just want to make sure that I'm clear. When I say we need to continue witnessing to a lost world, we need to continue bringing lost souls to the cross of Jesus Christ, we need to continue giving to ministries, to organizations that advance the kingdom of God we need to continue serving in every way we possibly can you know serve at your church volunteer uh, you know no matter what it is a greeter at the door an usher a, you know a parking attendant if your church needs them however you can serve and we need to continue loving even those who hate us for the name of Jesus so I just want to bring you 21 irrefutable facts of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Number one, Jesus himself will come again. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16 says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. Number two, Jesus himself will receive us. In John 14 3 it says, Jesus said, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am there you may be also number three we will meet him in the air first Thessalonians 4 verse 17 says then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord number four he will minister to those who are found watchful in Luke 12 37 it says blessed are those servants whom the ser whom the master when he comes will find watching assuredly I say to you that he will gird himself and have them sit down to eat and will come and serve them we must remain watchful number five he will return to the earth in Acts 1 verse 11 it says and also said men of Galilee why do you stand gazing up into heaven this same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven number six he will return to the Mount of Olives Zechariah 14 14 verse 4 says and in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives um, which faces Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west, making a very large valley. Half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half of it toward the south. You know what? Mount of Olives is still in one piece, so if anyone ever tells you Christ already came, 
clearly they're lying. Okay, our history books would be full of that information. Believe it or not, there is a large group of people who believe that Christ already came. <laughs> I'm like, really? That thousand year period that's referred to as the Dark Ages is when you think Christ came? Hmm, interesting that the light of the world would be called the Dark Ages during his reign. Just doesn't make sense, does it? Of course it doesn't. Um, all right, number seven. He will return in flaming fire out of Second Thessalonians 1, verse 7 and 8. And to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know God? I'm talking about the real God, not some fake God or false God or some twisted version of God that some religions follow. I'm talking about the real God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the creator of the universe, the Father of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the real God. You need to know him. Number eight, he will come with power and great glory. Matthew 24, 30 says, And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Number nine, he will stand on the earth. Job 19, verse 25 says, For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. Number 10, he will destroy the Antichrist. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 8 says, And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Number 11, he will sit on the throne of his glory. Matthew 25 verse 31, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Number 12, he'll be given the throne of David. In Luke 1 verse 32 says, He will be great and we will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Number 13, he will be given the nations. Psalm 2 verse 8 says, Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You know, of course, Psalm, Psalm 2 is all about the Messiah's triumph and kingdom. And this was God talking to his son Jesus when he said, Ask of me, and I'll give you the nations for your inheritance. Number 14, he will gather all nations and judge them. Matthew 25 verse 32 says all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Okay, Jesus said his sheep know his voice and follow him. Jesus told us many times he was the shepherd. Number 15, he will reign on the earth. Jeremiah 23 verse 5 says behold the days are coming says the Lord that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. You know, the Bible tells us also in Psalm 2 that he will reign, let's see, you shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel in Psalm 2 verse 9. Christ will reign, we know in Revelation talks about his thousand year reign on the earth. Number 16, he will be given the kingdoms of this world. In Revelation 11 verse 15 it says, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of, of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. <laughs> Amen and hallelujah to that. Uh, number 17, he will be given dominion. Daniel 7 verse 14 says, Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. Awesome. Number 18, All who are in their graves will hear his voice. 
John 5 verse 28 says, Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice. Number 19, every eye will see him. Revelation 1 verse 7, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. That's going to be an awesome event. Number 20, every knee will bow. Isaiah 45 verse 22 and 23 says, Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. Philippians 2 verse 9 through 11 says, Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father number 21 we can hasten the coming of the Lord second Peter 3 verse 12 says looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God now hasten means to cause something to happen soon in fact, let me read to you what it says in the NIV in 2 Peter 3, verse 12. In the NIV it says, As you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. And speed its coming. So we're able to speed up the coming of Christ? Okay, how about, let's see, in the King James Version, 2 Peter 3, verse 12, says looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God so we're to do business until Christ comes we're to be faithful we're to serve him with all we've got with all we do and you know what I, I always love to see what Jesus talks about um, if you've got a Bible that's got the uh, words of Jesus in red I highly recommend those um, but a lot of people say oh you've got to look for this before Christ comes or you have to look for that yes there are signs there are many signs but you know I think one of the key signs in Matthew 24 is also in verse 14 and Jesus said and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come so we gotta preach the word to the world people here's a way we can hasten the return of Christ we can speed up his return by spreading the good news of the gospel of Christ into all the world you have a computer you have the ability to do this let's do what we can and share the good news of the gospel of Christ with everyone we know all over the world every chance you get and we can speed up the return of Jesus Christ I hope and pray that you know him as your Lord and Savior because guess what the whole world will see him the dead the living everyone will come to bow their head and bow their knee to Jesus Christ the King of Kings the Lord of Lords he is coming he said he would so I know it's true and you should trust him are you serving him today? I pray that you are in every way you possibly can. God bless you guys. Good Lord willing, I'll see you again soon.